is just fantastic. Captain's Log, subdates 210726.4. As we were busy spending the weekend celebrating the fireworks, we failed to notice a few hundred Sulabon stealth ships two light years behind us. Apparently they'd been in pursuit for some time. LOL. If you're a gamer, video game that is, you will undoubtedly have heard of Blizzard. If you haven't, here is a brief list of some of the games they're known for. Heroes of the Storm, Diablo, Starcraft, Hearthstone, Overwatch, and World of Warcraft. Not World of Warcraft. That is something completely different, and it's a very interesting way of paying for service. I myself have Diablo 3, which I've still never installed, I still have in the case and the game code, because for seven years I forgot I still had it before I left Norwich. And I have in fact played World of Warcraft. I did for about two and a half to three years while at uni, but upon leaving and being unemployed, I realised there were some errors within the entire idea of World of Warcraft. Not the canon, but the fact you had to pay monthly to have access to the servers, and the fact you still then had to pay for the additional expansions, which to me was a massive rip-off. So if you're interested, I stopped playing around the time of Cataclysm. As I stopped paying attention to them in 2012, I genuinely heard nothing of them until very recently. And with what has happened recently, I think we should go through some of the accusations, along with the subsequent consequences. But I do want to insert now, I had genuinely heard nothing about the two-year investigation by the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing into Activision Blizzard. The reason for the investigation, which has now led to a lawsuit against Activision Blizzard, is because female employees were allegedly subjected to unequal pay and sexual harassment. And this would be in all levels of employment. This would include all levels of employment, compensation, promotion, assignments, and termination. California alleges that Activision Blizzard's leadership has failed to address any of these outstanding issues or prevent them from occurring within the workplace. We know this now because of a 29-page document that has now come to light, which goes through all the various breaches of code and failings of Activision Blizzard when it came to the female employees. Some of those accusations aimed at Activision Blizzard include assigning women and women of color to lower paid and lower opportunity levels, with lower starting pay for similar work as their male counterparts. Additional accusations include fostering a pervasive frat boy workplace culture in the office, with male employees alleged to drink copious amounts of alcohol as they make their way through cubicles, to then act inappropriately towards female employees. Within that document, it also cites an incident where a female employee who was already subjected to intense sexual harassment at the company took her life during a work trip with a male supervisor who allegedly brought inappropriate sexual items with him on the trip. The lawsuit then is requesting an injunction that will then force Activision Blizzard to comply with workplace protections as well as deliver unpaid wages, pay adjustments, back pay and lost wages along with benefits for female employees. This does sound slightly similar to something happening in the United Kingdom within the retail industry, with a company called Asda, concerning equal pay. That's as far as the similarity goes though. A spokesperson for Activision Blizzard has put out a statement, and it reads as follows. We value diversity, and strive to foster a workplace that offers inclusivity for everyone. There is no place in our company or industry or any industry for sexual misconduct or harassment of any kind. We take every allegation seriously and investigate all claims. In cases related to misconduct, action was taken to address the issue. The DFEH includes distorted and in many cases false descriptions of Blizzard's past. We have been extremely cooperative with the DFEH throughout their investigation including providing them with extensive data and ample documentation, but they refused to inform us what issues they perceived. 
they were required by law to adequately investigate and to have good faith discussions with us to better understand and to resolve any claims or concerns before going to litigation, but they failed to do so. Instead, they rushed to file an inaccurate complaint, as we will demonstrate in court. We are sickened by the reprehensible conduct of the DFEH to drag into the complaint the tragic passing of an employee whose passing has no bearing whatsoever on this case, and with no regard for her grieving family. While we find this behavior to be disgraceful and unprofessional, it is unfortunately an example of how they have conducted themselves throughout the course of their investigation. It is this type of irresponsible behavior from unaccountable state bureaucrats that are driving many of the state's best businesses out of California. The picture of the DFEH paints is not the blizzard workplace of today. Over the past several years and continuing since the initial investigation started, we've made significant changes to address company culture and reflect more diversity within our leadership teams. We've updated our code of conduct to emphasize a strict non-retaliation focus, amplified internal programs, and channels for employees to report violations, including the air quotes, ask list, and air quotes, with a confidential integrity hotline, and introduced an employee relations team dedicated to investigating employee concerns. We have strengthened our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion and combined our employee networks at a global level to provide additional support. Employees must also undergo regular anti-harassment training and have done so for many years. We put tremendous effort in creating fair and rewarding compensation packages and policies that reflect our culture and business, and we strive to pay all employees fairly for equal or substantially similar work. We take a variety of proactive steps to ensure that pay is driven by non-discriminatory factors. For example, we reward and compensate employees based on their performance, and we conduct extensive anti-discrimination trainings, including for those who are part of the compensation process. We are confident in our ability to demonstrate our practices as an equal opportunity employer that fosters a supportive, diverse, and inclusive workplace for our people, and we are committed to continuing this effort in the years to come. It is a shame that the DFEH did not want to engage with us on what they thought they were seeing in their investigation. Since this has happened and since that statement has come to light, former Activision Blizzard executives Mike Morhaime, Haime, M-O-R-H-A-I-M-E, and Chris Metzen both released statements addressing the harassment and discrimination against the company, along with apologizing to the women involved. 20 current employees, which includes a lead World of Warcraft developer, Jeremy Fiesel, have criticized the company's response, indicating that some developers have stopped working in solidarity with the women that have come forward. With there being a more recent patch release in World of Warcraft, many players have decided to host a sit-in in Ouroboros. I had wondered what this was about when I saw it a few weeks ago. I didn't pay enough attention, okay? But... It's interesting to see people taking a stance now. My view is the same view I'm going to hold forever because I'm consistent. Until this goes through a court, you have to wait. The annoying thing here is World of Warcraft have latched onto one aspect and run with it as the key point, not addressing what has been claimed when it comes to discrimination. Instead saying, but they didn't communicate with us enough which is exactly what people have noticed, and why many articles are now surfacing, indicating that that, as far as a statement goes, is tripe. You are essentially trying to mug off the reader and your fans, which might go so far as to explain why subscriptions with Blizzard are going down. Someone could well claim cancel culture, I don't think that's the case, nor do I care for the term consequence culture, not in the slightest. In this, people are being reactionary, yes. But at the same time, when somebody had a chance to put out a thought-out statement, they didn't address the actual point, and when they came close to it, they indicated based on work, as in how much you do, which understandably, much like everything else, goes down like a lump of lead. I'm going to link a whole bunch of sources. The main one is the 29-page document itself. I'd like to know what you think. 
please do let me know in the comments down below. As a final thing, I'm going to be streaming on Twitch tonight. So if I don't see you there, have a fantastic day. And thank you all very much for listening.